Now we're going to talk about why art is becoming a more attractive alternative asset. Investors have been looking to diversify away from traditional asset classes in order to avoid the market cyclical behavior. Now a range of new opportunities that are substitutable for long-term equity holdings have become more available. In the past 20 years, the popularity of alternative investments has surged due to their low correlation and covariance with equity. Alternative investments also offer a greater breadth of risk return opportunities to individuals and also uh, to mutual funds. Mutual funds, in fact, now hold around 10 to 20% of their total investments in alternative assets, and this figure is set to increase. Art has always been viewed as a consumptive item to display wealth and prestige. It has, however, only started to be more formally viewed as an investment class over the last 30 years. An estimated 75% of high net worth market participants buy art purely for pleasure. But now up to 10% of collectors view investment returns as the most important consideration of their portfolio. The art market is one of the least regulated and imperfect investment markets in the world and can be very prof profitable. The most famous and probably the first formally documented investment in art started with the British Rail Pension Fund. From 1974 to 1999, the fund invested 2.9% of its entire portfolio in arts and antiques and was able to realize a compounded annual return of 11.3% per annum. Since then, there has been a growing interest in these passion investment vehicles, and subsequently, there has been greater availability of information and research surrounding them. It has been a common finding in art research to show very low correlations with equity and also with real estate. Art as an asset class has also shown to be relatively unreactive to financial crashes and to consistently outperform inflation. Although the market has experienced bubbles in the past, the likelihood of an entire market crash is nearly inconceivable and I'll, I'll just tell you why. This is a quote from Philip Hoffman, the CEO of the Fine Art Fund, which is a mutual fund that invests exclusively in art. I'll talk about them a little bit more later. But he said, the value of a Canaletto will never go down to zero. It will never do an Enron or a Marsoni. And in many ways, there seems to be undeniable truth in this statement. There cannot be an overnight change in the cultural and historical significance of certain pieces of art and this significance um, is from where it gains its value so in that respect it will never it will never lose that it will never go down to being worth zero